very good. So we can look at it this way. So if the mu uh, positive, let's just take mu positive. So it's going to come something like this, zero being an equilibria, and we have these two other equilibria. So the basic idea of a pitchfork, it converts for mu less than zero, a stable equilibria, into two stable equilibria with a saddle in between. I think many of you have seen this already. It's in a lot of textbooks and so on. Is that right? It's the source of one direction. That's, you're absolutely right. Right. Okay, so what I'd like to do today is develop this theme, try to convince you that this is correct, but is wrong. So uh, mathematics can be correct and still wrong if it gives rise to the wrong concepts. And my claim is that this is wrong. And this is the basis for all the literature on the pitchfork. So uh, I will really work hard to convince you that this gives the wrong picture. And here's, I mean, here's a rough reason. Uh, this is missing a second derivative. Okay, so then people say it's co-dimension one. The phenomenon is co-dimension one. And, uh, and they say that this is not robust because of the second, you could always add a small second derivative. So uh, that's the lessons people have drawn from this picture that it's not robust and uh, it has this question about no second derivative. Okay, so uh, in uh, the first paper in that list, Mike Schub was the editor, uh, and he wrote to me, I wrote Hannes at one point and said, it sounds to me like you don't believe in the pitchfork. And he wrote back, he was the editor, and he said, yes, and my uh, referees, three referees also don't believe in the pitchfork. <laughs> So I said that we could check Google under Pitchfork, and uh, there would be a hundred references and more to physicists using it frequently. So uh, we had a long, uh, tough correspondence on this issue. Uh, eventually, uh, he helped uh, me solidify our work on the Pitchfork. So he really played a good contribution by his challenges uh, claiming all the time that this is co-dimension one, therefore you won't see it in physics or biology. Uh, so this challenged me a lot to make sense of the pitchfork. And we did, in the first paper, some, some, some of that, not completely. But I found, or we found, uh, subsequently, an example which gives complete clarification for everything I say, I believe. And so this is what I'm uh, asking you to look at and, uh, and I'm trying to convince you it makes sense what I've just said. Uh, the, the, all, essentially all the literature on the pitchfork gives the wrong impression. Uh, one of some of the best work is done, most people just leave it at one variable. Some people extend it to many variables and they have as a hypothesis conditions which force the second derivative to be zero. Also, you always have this so-called co-dimension one phenomenon, which I think is wrong. But remember now, the pitchfork has this property as the bifurcation parameter changes, it changes from a single stable equilibria to two stable equilibria. So that's the character, characterizing feature of the pitchfork. Going from one equilibria to two stable equilibria. I'm talking stable equilibria. Stable equilibria play the biggest role uh, imaginable in the applied math. They're the ones one actually sees in physics or biology. So that's why I want to focus on the pitchfork and the stable equilibria. Okay, so let me go ahead and, uh, and give another example. 
So this is a normal form. And one can start in the one variable case with some kind of hypothesis and derive this. And you'll see that in our first paper. Okay, uh, and that was part way to this result. But now let's look at another example. X prime equals y squared. And so this does, uh, some people make a symmetric hypothesis to get rid of the second derivative. This has got the advantage I can change this a to a b to make it non-symmetric. Doesn't change anything much. Okay, in our uh, second paper here on the pitchfork, what we do is we have found some great software which shows this in a, a way that you can just vary the parameters A or A and B down on the slide and show you the link in person, but I didn't. So I'm just going to describe the words and some pictures that's happening. Okay, so I want to analyze this. Uh, my belief is that it has not been done before. A is our mu. A is the bifurcation parameter. Okay, so we want to look at the what's happening the dynamics is A changes from negative through zero through one. Okay, so here's some pictures. This, you see, this is all just parabolas. Everything is parabola. So, parabolas. So what we're doing now is looking at a geometry of parabolas, which has got a lot of appeal to it. Everything can be seen in terms of parabolas with one or two parameters. Okay, so let's look at what are called isoclines. So we want to look at x prime equation equals zero. These, these are called isoclines sometimes. Then y prime equals zero, same. So we have two isoclines. When they intersect, we will get the equilibria. So these uh, isoclines are parabolas. It's all uh, very simple uh, pre-calculus mathematics, if you want. OK, so let's look at, uh, say, x and y. If a equals 0, you get uh, the basic parabola. I think it's going to look something like this. This is going to be the equation for x prime equals zero. You can correct me if you think I make a mistake or if I do make a mistake. Okay, so that's the first isocline. This is a, the parameter a equals zero. The second isocline then, then the, like this, another parabola for y prime equals zero. Okay, and you can see it read right off from this. If we take uh, for a equals zero, then they intersect. Oh, something uh, like this. Intersection of two parabolas. Uh, it will have two equilibria. So we're only concerned, concerned with this equilibria at zero, at the origin of the plane. All right, so this is at the parameter value a equals zero for both. And here I superimpose them, so the equilibrium will be the intersections. Okay, now I want to uh, change it. So a, if a equals one, then we'll get a uh, tangent c. So we can see from here, if a equals 1, the two uh, derivatives are tangent at the curve. Okay, so for a equals 1, you have a tangency at 0, and that's going to be the bifurcation point. So a equals 1 is the uh, bifurcation point. Remember, a is our uh, bifurcation parameter. So a equals 1. Uh, will be uh, when the, the isoclines are both zero. So that's going to be a uh, Okay, now we're looking at, uh, let's take directly A 
for blackboard space, I'm going to take A bigger than 1. So then uh, the first one for A bigger than 1 is going to look like, like this. This is x prime equals 0. This is all just parabolas, but as A changes, this parabola is being translated so the uh, uh, endpoint is going to be moving from the origin over here. So this is the isocline typically for A bigger than 1. Okay? So now I want to look at the same thing for the y prime equals 0 for A equals 1. That's going to have a uh, picture, if I'm not mistaken, something like this maybe. Uh, now this is, just even though I'm working with two parabolas, the two new equilibria, which are the two basins. And one can check either using uh, analytic geometry or some, some kind of a calculus. Uh, you can check what I just said, that we get two sinks, two basins on this side, and this is the original uh, equilibria, which has become a source. It's a saddle. It's a saddle. It really is a saddle now. And then we have everything over here. So what we have here is our model for the pitchfork in two or more dimensions. This is, a, I claim, a good uh, model for the pitchfork, a good normal form. This is the normal form, and you can you get away from symmetry just by putting B here, and it doesn't change the uh, character. <laughs> if this is making sense, I'm most of the way there. Because we have something now robust. If you perturb this, it still has the same character. This is a robust model. <laughs>